Welcome back. And this is the next in the series of videos looking at pH. In this pack, we're going to be covering buffers, indicators, and pH curves. So be a good idea before we start, just to remind yourself of the basic equations we've studied in the pH pack. Once you've done that, you're going to need your notes, and we're starting on page two. So we need to understand what's meant by a buffer. Well, a buffer can resist changes to pH despite additions of small amounts of acid or alkali. There are a couple of things um, to really pay attention to. They can resist the changes. The pH doesn't remain absolutely rock steady. Last And lastly, uh, it only works with small amounts of acid or alkali. If you come along with concentrated sulfuric acid, no buffer is going to survive that. Now, you can make a buffer in one of two ways. You either have a weak acid and its salt, or a weak alkali and its salt. So if you want a buffer with a pH of less than 7, you would use the weak acid. But if you wanted a pH uh, of a buffer greater than 7, you'd use a weak base. So a typical exam question would be to ask what happens when you add acid to a buffering system. So the buffer system I'm going to consider is ethanoic acid uh, in equilibrium with its salt. And remember, I've got both of those present uh, for my buffer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with an equation. So I have my CH3COOH, my ethanoic acid, and it's in equilibrium with the CH3COO negative and the hydrogen ions. You could, instead of this equation, just add in the water and you get H3O positive. Both of those are correct. But let's um, start with this one and put in my state symbols, like so. Now, we want to consider what happens when we add acid to this. In other words, when we increase this concentration. Now, first point to make is that because this is a weak acid and because I've added excess salt, I have what we call a large reservoir of both the undissociated acid and the salt. So because of this large reservoir of both the acid and the salt, when I add a little bit extra of hydrogen ions, the equilibrium position can shift backwards to absorb them. But because of the larger reservoir of the acid and its salt, the ratio of these two does not change. Therefore, the concentration of the hydrogen ions remains roughly constant. So those are the three things to explain how a buffer can react with an acid and keep the pH roughly constant. You have the large reservoir of the acid and a large reservoir of the salt. Remember, you've added extra salt to make the buffer. If you add hydrogen ions, they will react with this salt. That will shift the equilibrium position this way, reducing the number of hydrogen ions. But... Because the ratio of these two remains roughly constant, because there's such a large reservoir of them, that keeps the hydrogen ions also constant and the pH remains constant. The alkali is exactly the same argument, except there's a separate reaction. So explaining what happens when we add an alkali to our system is very similar, at least in the first steps, to the acid explanation, because it works on the same principle. I have a large reservoir, again, of the acid and of its dissociated salt. But this time, the OH negative ions, the alkali, reacts with the acid, CH3COOH. And in this case, we've got this CH3COOH and the OH negative ions reacting to form the salt, CH3COO negative, and water. So it's the same kind of reaction in step two, but there it was hydrogen ions which were reacting. Here it's the OH negative reaction. But the third point again is the same. The ratio of the acid to the salt remains constant. Therefore, the pH remains roughly constant. And that explains how an acid and an alkali being added to my buffer does not change the pH.
Skipping the experiment on page three, we're going to move on to look at buffer calculations. And just with pH calculations, there are some assumptions that we need to make in order to be able to do our calculations. Some of them are the same as they are for acidic uh, pH calculations, but one of them is different, and you do need to be careful of that one. So the first assumption we can make when doing buffer calculations is the same as the first assumption in acid pH calculations. And it's that the concentration of the acid at the start is equal to the concentration of the acid at equilibrium. We can make this assumption because this is a weak acid and it only partially ionises. So therefore the concentration of the acid at the start is equal to the concentration of the acid at equilibria. Now the second assumption is different from the assumption that we made in the pH calculations and this is where you need to be a bit careful because to make the buffer you've added excess salt and we're going to make the assumption that the concentration of the salt that we've added is equal to the concentration of the salt at equilibria. Now we can make that assumption because we generally use a sodium salt and all sodium salts are soluble so it will all dissolve to give a sodium ion and the ethanoate ion and we can assume that the, all the uh, ethanoate ions are coming from the salt that we've added. So those are our two main assumptions. We could also say if we were asked for a third assumption that the concentration of the hydrogen ions from the water is negligible and can be ignored. But that's not one of the main assumptions. The, these first two are the key ones. So we're going to work out the pH of this buffer system. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down the equation and the expression for Ka, just as I did with pH. So the Ka for this uh, dissociation of ethanoic acid, concentration of the salt, o -O negative, times the concentration of the hydrogen ions, and that's what we're trying to find out, to find the pH, divided by the concentration of the acid. And the equation for that one was just going to be the CH3COOH in equilibrium with its salt. CH3COO negative and H positive. So the units for the Ka expression are the same as they always are, which is moles dm to the minus 3, because it uh, cancels down. Rearranging my equation to make concentration of hydrogen ions the subject, so that would be Ka times the concentration of the acid divided by the concentration of the salts. And then we're just going to put the values in. Now the Ka for a buffer is exactly the same as the Ka is for a weak acid. So we're just going to put the values in. So that's my Ka value, which I can find in my data book, times the concentration of my acid divided by the concentration of my salts. And again, this is moles dm to the minus 3. So put that into my calculator and I get 8.5 times 10 to the minus 6. Take minus log to the base 10 of that and I get 5.07. So I've made a buffer with a pH of 5.07. Now a very special case arises if the concentration of the acid equals the concentration of the salt. In other words, they're equimolar. And in this case, these two values cancel out. So if you think about your Ka expression for an acid and its salt over concentration of HA, if we know a point or we have a point where these two are the same number, they will cancel and you'll just get Ka equals the concentration of the hydrogen ions. In other words, under the special case scenario, the pKa value equals the pH. And we're going to need that later on when we talk about weak acid titration curves. So we're on page five of your notes, and I'd like you to have a go at these buffer calculations, and then I will go through them. So I suggest you pause the video at this point and have a go at them. When you've had a go, check the answers against the video version. 
So hopefully you've had a chance to have a go at these calculations and I'm going to go through them. Um, I'm going to throw through the first page in quite a bit of detail and the second page not so much. So I want a pH of a buffer solution that's made by making a one decimeter cubed solution containing one mole of ethanoic acid and one mole of sodium ethanoate. So I'm going to start again with my Ka expression. It's always good to do that. So again, this is ethanoic acid. So it's CH3COO negative hydrogen ions and divided by ch 3 COOH. And because I've got one mole in one decimeter cubed, that makes the concentration one. So my concentration of my hydrogen ions, again, rearranging this equation and putting the values in, I've got, I've been told my Ka for my uh, ethanoic acid 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5 times by 1 divided by 1. And obviously that comes out as 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5. And I can find minus log to the base 10 of that one. And I get 4.76 as my pH. You'll notice these will get us slightly harder as we go through. And then we'll do some even harder ones in a class. So this time we've been told we've got grams of um, sodium propanoate and grams of uh, propanoic acid. So first of all, I have to work out some concentrations. So the moles of propanoic acid is equal to my mass, 18.5, divided by the RMM, which is 74. So I get 0 0.25. And I can work out the concentration as being my number of moles, 0 0.25 times by a thousand divided by the volume which in this case is 250 and I get 1.0 moles dm to the minus three that's moles of acid mole of salt is done in exactly the same way the only thing to be careful of in this second set with the salt is do remember you are including the sodium because you're working out the number of moles of salt and that is equal to the number of moles of CH, C2H5COO negative. So just be careful to include the sodium or potassium or whatever in this bit. Then it becomes exactly the same as the last one. We put our numbers in and solve for hydrogen ions. You'll notice that they've given us the pKa value rather than the Ka value. So I'm, first of all, I'm going to have to convert the pKa into uh, a Ka value. So this is 10 to the minus 4.87 times by the concentration uh, of the uh, acid, which in this case is 1, and divided by the concentration of the salt. 0.5. So plug that all into my calculator and I get 2.7 something 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 times 10 to the minus 5. Stick that number into uh, minus log to base 10 and I get a pH of 4.57. So this next example, example 3, very similar, but this time you're actually mixing two solutions together. So you have to be careful on this one because you will be diluting your acid and diluting your salt. Because I'm going to add 50 centimetres cubed of my acid to 100 centimetres cubed of my salt. So the concentrations are not going to stay the same. and I'm going to need to convert um, them into the new concentrations. So I'm working out my number of moles of acid. So volume divided by 1000 times concentration, which will give me my number of moles. But now I'm, divide, I'm dissolving it in a bigger volume. So I'm going to reduce the concentration. But the number of moles, remember, stays the same. So I've reduced it and I've reduced it to 0 0.1 molar. If you think about it, you've diluted it um, by a factor of 3. So you've gone from 50 to 150. So the concentration has divided by 3. You can probably do all this bit in your head. Um, but sometimes they give you numbers which are not quite so nice. We're going to do exactly the same thing now for the moles of uh, salt. Again, you should notice that the concentration is reduced from 0.6 to 0.4. 
Now we've got our new concentrations, we just need to put them back into our Ka expression and solve again. So putting the numbers into the equation, pressing all the buttons on my calculator, I get a pH of 5.36. So the last question on this page does throw a lot of students when they first come across it, but it's actually a lot easier than it looks. So you're looking at the ratios in which you need to mix ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate. So we're going to assume that we can have equal concentrations of both of those. So we're just looking at the volume ratio. So we know two things. We know the pH and we know the pKa. So again, I'm going to use those to find the concentration of hydrogen ions as 10 to the minus 5 and the Ka value is 10 to the minus 4.76. So I've got my Ka expression there, and I'm just going to look at the ratio of the acid to the salt. So I'm going to rearrange this to get the acid to the salt ratio. So I have CH3COOH over CH3. COO negative, and that equals the concentration of the hydrogen ions over the Ka value. So the ratio of these two is equal to the ratio between these two, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5 again. So that is a 1 to 1.74 ratio. In other words, the way we can write this is that 174 or 17.4 or even 1.74 centimeters cubed of a one molar salt needs 100 centimeters cubed, or again, as long as they're in this ratio, it could be one, it could be 10 to 17.4, it doesn't matter, of one molar acid. And that will make me a buffered solution with a pH of five. So all we're trying to get to is this ratio here, the ratio of acid to uh, salt. So onto the second page of calculations, and again, a very similar ones to the ones we did at the start. Um, 0.5 molar propanoic acid with one molar sodium propanoate, and we've been given the Ka value for uh, propanoic acid. And it's just a case of rearranging my expression and putting numbers in. You should get 5.17. Second example, again, very straightforward, but this time because we've been given grams, we need to first of all work out the concentration before we can put it into our Ka expression. Once we've got the concentrations of the acid and the salt, put them into our Ka expression and you should get a pH of 3.16. Question 7, done in the same way as the previous example on the, pre on the previous page. Again, we've working out the new concentration, because remember we're diluting it from uh, 20 or 80 up to 100. And then again, subbing those new concentrations into our expression. And we get pH this time of 4.05. And last but not least, you've got the proportions question again. And again, we're just looking for a ratio between acid and uh, the alkali, the salt. So for every 100 centimetres cubed of methanoic acid, you would need 56.3 centimetres cubed of the salt. Now, it could also be 10 to 5.63 or even 1 to 0.563 of a centimetre cubed, depending on the volume of buffer you needed. So your blood pH lies in a very narrow range between 7.35 and 7.45. And any small changes outside of that can lead to serious complications. However, the uh, respiration system produces carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide can react with the water to produce an acid. So your body has developed ways of buffering your blood such that that reaction does not either produce too many hydrogen ions, which would push the pH too low, or too few hydrogen ions, which would push the pH 
too high. So the equation we're interested in is the fact that the carbon dioxide can react with water to make carbolic acid, can react from H2CO3. That H2CO3 can also break down into the carbonate ions, HCO3 minus, and hydrogen ions. And it's that, the pH, that we come to the end. So there are two major organs which control this equilibrium position and keep this concentration of hydrogen ions constant. And these are the lungs and the kidneys. So the lungs control the carbon dioxide part of the equilibrium. So for example, under exercise, where we may be producing more carbon dioxide, the lungs will breathe more, removing more carbon dioxide from the system and restoring equilibrium. On the other hand, our kidneys can either release or absorb hydrogen carbonate ions. This will stabilize this end of the reaction. So either end, we control carbon dioxide concentration through the lungs and the hydrogen carbonate concentration through the kidneys. And those work together to keep the concentration of the hydrogen ions of the blood relatively constant. So that finishes this section of the notes looking at buffers. You should be able to describe how a buffer works on addition of small amounts of acid or alkali and also be able to do the basic buffer calculations. You should also be able to describe one important biochemical buffering system, and that is the carbon dioxide hydrogen carbonate buffering system. In the next video, we're going to be looking at pH curves and also at indicators. So until then, stay safe. See you later. Bye-bye.